Hi, it is Tootie Tagerly, Tuesday midday in San Francisco, whether you're listening to this live or catching this after the fact. Talking today about this juxtaposition of two different things that may not feel so similar, but it's the combination of safety and, and adventure, because I believe these are intricately linked and both need to be present for, for us to really thrive and grow as leaders. I got my second vaccination um, a couple of weeks ago and really felt that sense of freedom and liberation being two weeks post my second vaccination. Immediately, my partner wanted to get away and we planned a trip up to the Sierras where we were able to go out and hike and get out in, in desolation wilderness. It really reminded me um, oh, and then afterwards we went out to dinner and we actually ate indoors at a restaurant, which felt so strange. This reminded me of a lesson. It reminded me about how this past year and a half has really been with this sense of cocooning, of coming inwards, of spending time and slowing down with, with my children, with my family, with my partner, and really serving clients in my business on, on Zoom. But there was a sense of cocooning inwards, of spending time cooking, of spending time baking, of doing puzzles, of doing a lot of hikes and connection time with, with my children. And it's felt wonderful to slow down and do that and have that safety and security. And at the same time, there was a big push for, but I want more. I want to expand, I want to open up, I wanna go out and have adventures in the world. And now I feel safe with this vaccine that I finally can do it. Last weekend, my partner wanted to show me a hike that was really, really special to him from childhood. And it was up um, by the town of Strawberry in near South Lake Tahoe, between San Francisco and South Lake Tahoe. We drove up and um, entered this hike from, I think it was the parking lot was for Pyramid Lake. And there was such a sense of, oh my gosh, we don't know what this hike is gonna be like. We think we're gonna get lost. And there was also the sense as we started going because we had left San Francisco that morning. So we were starting a very long hike at about 10 a.m. And as we started going upwards, we passed people coming down and in the parking lot, it was hot and warm with brilliant sunshine. But as we started walking and going, um, people started hurrying down. And the conversation would get something like this. And we'd say, like, okay, what was the way? How far were you able to get? So we didn't know what the trail was like because there was snow. But more and more as time passed and we continued hiking and clamoring over boulders, people would say, um, we're going down because there's a storm coming. And they would say, oh, we are going down because, you know, there's this lightning storm, right? We're avoiding the rain. Um, and then as more, pe more people come, they'd say, be careful. And I hate the term, be careful, because I kind of am a rebel. I, I want to go. I want to push. I want to push towards the, the adventure. And we had a wonderful day. We got lost. We climbed through crevices. We sat by waterfalls, we had lunch, it was beautiful, and we got massively wet. We had to climb back down through, through a rainfall. We could hear thunder and we could see lightning. Um, my whole butt was wet, I fell multiple times, but it was wonderful. And I feel like the sense of safety and security and cocooning that I was at, um, throughout the length of this pandemic really helped propel me to want to take more and more adventures. So the first lesson from this is feeling safe provides the space for, for adventure. I'll share another, another lesson, stories to reinforce this point. Um, I have a I have a 10 year old daughter and recently, I think within the last four or five weeks, her school opened. She'd been doing distance learning, but finally she was able to go back to school. And she was only able to go back to school two days a week, but that's okay. That was a start. <sighs> so I tend to be a little bit of a free range mom. I believe in autonomy. I want my children to, 
know how to be with themselves in the world, know how to take care of themselves. And for quite a little while now, I've been pushing my 10 year old daughter to uh, walk home from school. School's about a mile away from our house. It's along a safe street. Um, and I've been pushing her and be like, hey, why don't you find a friend? I can arrange a friend for you. You can walk home. You can you know, have that little bit of independence. And she was not having it. I wasn't able to find a friend because with distance learning, the kids are either on Monday, Tuesday or Thursday, Friday. Most of her friends were on the Thursday, Friday schedule. And as we got closer and closer to school starting, she got more and more stressed out. And finally, she looked at me one day and she said, Mama, don't make me walk home from school. I'm just not comfortable. And my heart broke. I think many of us are familiar with mommy guilt. I was like, oh no, what's wrong with me? I'm pushing my child too hard. I'm doing all of this stuff. And I was like, of course, sweetie, I'll come pick you up. Your dad will come pick you up. You don't have to walk home from school. So fast forward, you know, she goes to her first day of school. I pick her up. She goes to her second day of school. Her dad picks her up. Um, and then I get uh, a message from her dad because he'd had this conversation. He was like, Nisa's going to walk home from school. She's going to walk home from school to your house. Um, Want to make sure that that's okay. And I'm like, yes, this is awesome. So the second leadership lesson here around adventure and safety is leaders show possibilities to others and let others choose their path. I was able to show her the possibility of freedom and independence and autonomy because I put in that she can walk home from school by herself. And yet one of the mistakes I tend to make is I push too hard. I tend to be fierce and push a little bit hard, but instead in this case, I showed her the possibilities and I backed off. And once I backed off, that was the moment of insight. I can't snap my fingers. The moment of insight for her, she is going to go forward and choose her own path. She felt safe and secure enough in, in, in the love and in the permission and in the pushing that once I said, no, choose it yourself, do whatever you want by yourself, she was able to embrace the adventure and go forward and choose her own path. I was really proud of her. Third story, um, I was leading a, a group this morning called Leading from Any Position, and we went through a series of exercises where people talked about metaphors for their leadership. And one of the women in this section talked about home as being a metaphor. And this was so touching, not because of home itself, but the way that she talked about it. She talked about home being a place where you feel safe, secure, completely in control, you can be yourself. But yet, you invite other people into the room. You invite into your home, you invite guests in, you throw parties, you open up your home to roommates. And with home as a metaphor, you have to shift and change and maybe a little bit of a different type of leader when you open up your home to others. You can shift to become a host, a host mode, uh, where you do need to be more welcoming, where you do need to make people feel comfortable, where you can, you know, open up the doors for them. So the third lesson from the story of home as a metaphor for leadership is that multiple perspectives really provide you choice. In her leadership metaphor of home, home could be inward, safe, secure, but home could also be like adventure. I'm going to throw open the doors, invite everyone in and throw a grand old party. And I think as we move from these poles, these seemingly differences between adventure and safety, it's important to remember that they're a continuum. And I think that really comes into place to play with this metaphor of home because multiple perspectives provide choice. The last story that I'll tell, because I think this is going longer than usual, is uh, a, work, a work story around safety and adventure. And I think as a leader and as a man manager, I would often help many, many designers transition from being an individual contributor to starting to manage and grow their own team. I always believe that leaders are there to create other leaders. And in this particular case, there was a designer on my team and he really wanted uh, to manage people badly. 
And so what I really wanted to help him with is to be a good leader, to provide a support net of safety for his growth. So we talked about it. We got him opportunities to become like a team lead. We got him opportunities to like really step up into his leadership. But the biggest experiment that we ran, which I'm so proud of how well he did, was we got him a summer intern. And a summer internship program is wonderful because you get to try on the hat of being a manager. You're an intern manager. And there are very high expectations because Facebook wants interns to have a really good experience. And I think the lesson from this is that as a leader, you can provide the support net for growth for this particular individual. And I helped give him the opportunity to become an intern manager and create this sense of safety so that he can grow. And from that, he grew and soared. He has his own teams now. And what is what I've seen for other designers when this has happened is that it's almost a place of safety to let, let them leave the nest for some other designers because they were able to try on management while at Facebook by managing interns. It gave them the confidence to actually leave the company to go forth and work for a startup because they were looking for a brand new adventure. And it gave them the security knowing that, hey, I like managing. I know how to do it. I've done it well as an intern. And from that place of safety, I can go out and work somewhere else, work somewhere smaller and leverage all of these skills. Hmm. So I started today talking a little bit about my adventurous weekend, hiking in desolation wilderness from this place of cocooning after a year of COVID. Told a story about my daughter, told her about, told the story that I can provide her with possibilities and let her choose her own path. Shared a story about uh, from my workshop this morning, leading from any position where one of the women participating in it had this metaphor of home. Home is safety, security, comfort. It's my space. But I can also open it up to other people and invite people in and try on a different type of leadership in host mode. And you know what? I forgot to do the thing. So feeling safe provides the space for adventure with my daughter, leaders show possibilities and let others show their path. For this designer and this metaphor of home, multiple perspectives on this metaphor provides choice in your leadership. And then finally, by letting designers try on intern management, giving them a space to, to fail and to support them, having this safety provides the support net and then propels them to be able to manage, to leave the company if that's the right path for them and to start managing in, in a startup. Ultimately, I wanna leave you with this thought, feeling safe provides the space for adventure. I'm curious, do you feel safe and what adventure awaits as we emerge from a year and a half of pandemic lockdown, at least in San Francisco from this place where I sit? All right, have an awesome rest of your day See you next week. Bye.